Here's the question from the mock examination paper. Pause the video here and set up the question. So this is part A of the question. We set up the barrier to the dimensions given in the, in the question. And what we know is that the arm OA is going to rotate into a vertical position through 90 degrees. And we want to track the path of point P as the arm rotates through 90 degrees. Now, with all of these points here, you might think you have a very awkward question on your hands, but they are largely irrelevant. The only lines that are going to be of any significance to us are OA and AP. And as OA rotates upwards, the line from A to P will always hang in a vertical direction. So we place the center of the protractor over O and I've marked off divisions of 15 degrees so 15, 30, 45, 60, 75 and then finally 90 and that gives me even divisions all the way up as far as 90 degrees. So with the point of your compass on O and radius OA Stretch out your compass to pick up A and then swing a quadrant of a circle up. And this is the path that A will follow as this barrier lifts up. So from O and through all the points there we marked at 15 degrees, extend out lines. And this will give you A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 and A6. The position of A in different locations as the barrier lifts. The solution should be straightforward enough from here in the fact that the line from A to P will be a constant length and it will be hanging vertical from A1 and A2. So we draw vertical lines from all of those points. So as you can see, I've dropped vertical lines from all of the A points. Now I take the distance from A to P on my compass and I take that distance and I put the point of the compass on A1 and then mark the distance down and that will give me P1 and I do that so on and so forth for the rest of the points. So after dropping the vertical line down from A and then taking this distance from A to P which remains common, we mark that distance down each of the lines and that gives us P1 P2, P3, and so on. So once we have all the points found, we connect now a line from P to P1 through the rest of the P points. And this is the locus of point P for the movement of the barrier from a horizontal position into a vertical position. So here is the completed solution for the first part of the question. We've connected all the P points together, which gives us the locus of uh, point P for that movement. The main thing to remember about this question is that only focus on the information that is um, that you have to deal with. When you initially look at the question and you see six individual points, you could think to yourself that this is going to be a very, very complicated question. But the only things that you have to concern yourselves with is the lifting of the barrier OA and following the point there, P. So the only two lines that are of any relevance to us are OA and AP. We can forget about the rest. So that's that then completes the solution to the first part of the question. Here is the second part of the mock examination paper. Pause the video here and set up the question. So moving on to part two of the question, we have a cylinder and they show the elevation of it. 
and we're told that the diameter of the cylinder is 80 millimeters and it has a height or an altitude of 120 millimeters. So set up the elevation and from there project a plan. Find the position of point A in plan and in elevation. And to get B, we're told that we have to measure out 30 millimeters in the elevation and then that's dropped down. The question also says that both points are on the front. So that is the location of point B and this is the location of point A. Now a helix is the path of a straight line around a cylinder. So what we're trying to do now is trying to get the path of the line from A to B. So to solve this question in plan, we divide the area from A to B into six equal parts using the 60, 30 degree set square. We then label these sec sectors one, two, three, four, five, and six. So moving on to the next stage of the question. The solution to this is we have to develop the curved surface from A as far as 6 into a flat surface because once it's a flat surface then we can draw the straight line which is going to represent the helix. To achieve this we take the distance there from A as far as point number 1 on our compass and over here we've set up the beginnings of a rectangle and starting there at A, mark off that distance six times there with the compass until you get point number six. We bring across the top of the elevation to give us the top of the development and we complete that rectangle. The next thing that we have to do is find point B on the development. So using your compass, take the distance from five to B the distance there from five, put the point of your compass on five and open it out to B and mark that distance then from five back into this position here. You can see that point B lies between four and five and therefore it has to lie between four and five on the development here. So the helix is the path of a straight line around the cylinder and the straight line is running from B up to A. So we connect a straight line from B as far as A on the development and that cuts the line 4, 3, 2 and 1 in those locations there. So now we go back to our plan and we bring up 1, 2, three and four from plan. There is no need to bring up five because as we can see over here, five and six are not cut by the helix. So beginning here with point number one, as that line is extended up into elevation, there's line number one on the development. We bring that height over until it cuts the line one in the elevation. And we bring two onto two, three onto three, and finally four onto four. And then we indicate each one of those points. Those are the points on the helix in elevation. So in the elevation, we connect all these points together and that completes the helix. When you're drawing the helix, do not aim for this point straight away. The helix will kind of drop down from A before it begins to curve in to pick up all the other points. Draw a nice neat freehand curve connecting all of those points together. And that completes part two of the question. So here is the finished question. Again, put the effort in to label all the views, title block and the question itself.